Howdy, howdy. This is your live streamer, Freeman Sullivan. We're here at Castro and Market here in San Francisco to celebrate a joyous occasion. The release of Chelsea Manning from Federal Prison in Fort Leavenworth, Kansas. Yes, she was released this morning at approximately 9 a.m. Central Time. And we're here uh, at Castro Market. We're going to be celebrating here with a lineup of speakers and entertainment. And where we will have a, a little slice of that cake over there. So we're all looking forward to uh, some speakers and some entertainment. So everybody sit back and, well, you know, you don't have to sit back. You can tweet Chelsea at XY Chelsea, XY Chelsea on Twitter. And you can let her know, uh, wish her uh, good luck and the fact that she's out of uh, out of prison now. Through one of the last kind acts that President Obama made when, you know, was to, you know, he didn't have to uh, give Chelsea clemency at all, you know, and uh, it was kind of a grand gesture, I think, on President Obama's part. So. Anyway, we're going to be moving around here in a minute. I got to do my thing. We're going to get some speakers here. All right. Nice poster. <laughs> so, are the speakers going to be right over here? Are the speakers going to be right here? Okay, great. So, I'll have a good camera angle. All right, good. Because yeah, I'm live streaming this. So. And we usually get at least a few hundred viewers, so. There he is. He's on the back. All right. Oh, we know Francis. How you doing, Francis? So, getting ready for uh, speakers and some entertainment. I'm sure Francis is going to be playing for us. I don't know. It's full. The program is full. He said maybe. Maybe, Okay. Well, you know, we thought I'd ask. You know, it's seven years today. Seven years? Seven years in captivity. For telling the truth? Yeah, I know. And he was being tortured. Telling the truth is against the law. And he was being tortured for a great number of that time. Exactly. Exactly. All right, you beautiful people. Good evening and welcome to San Francisco's rally for International Day against homophobia, transphobia, and biphobia. My name is Gary Virginia, and I'm here today as a member of the grassroots organization Gays Without Borders and the coordinator of tonight's event. Before we begin our program, please be respectful of pedestrians and keep a clear path to and from the Muni station. Uh, so you can come in closer or go up on the balcony if you like if it gets too crowded. I'd like to start by thanking the seven sponsoring organizations of our rally tonight. The African Human Rights Coalition, Code Pink San Francisco, Courage to Resist, Gays Without Borders, Queer Strike, Vet Veterans for Peace Chapter 69, and World Can't Wait. Also, former California State Senator Mark Leno was invited to join us tonight and sends his thanks and wishes for a successful rally as he's traveling back from a work assignment to San Francisco tonight. <laughs> We're gathered here at Harvey Mill Plaza, and I'm sure Harvey is with us in spirit. As we evidence the harmful effects of learned homophobia and trans and biphobia globally, let's also recognize our power to offer hope to those in need. Harvey famously said, quote, I know that you cannot live on hope alone, but without it, life is not worth living. And you, and you, and you got to give them hope, end quote. We are here today under this beautiful rainbow flag created by the recently departed Gilbert Baker to offer hope to our queer sisters and brothers the world over. Let's make some noise and let the world know we're here, we're queer, and we demand justice and equality. Beautiful. At this time, we want to explain exactly what Idahot is and who is better to do that than the First Lady of the Castro, 
please welcome community leader Donna Sesche. Yay, Donna! Thank you. At first I thought it was Idaho. I didn't know what that was. But no. <laughs> and turn that wind down. You know, ladies and gentlemen, you know this better than I. Every day, somewhere in the world, a transgender, lesbian, gay, bisexual person is discriminated against, or faces rejection, or faces hatred, or faces violence, or faces murder, somewhere in the world. Today, we are joined together for International Day Against Homophobia and Transphobia and Biphobia. Now this is, uh, let's give that a round of applause. They came, up, they came up with the Idaho, or Idaho now, because we had a team, and it was created in 2004 to draw attention to policymakers, opinion leaders, social movements, the public, and the media. And boy, are we doing that today. In under a decade, May 17th has been established as the single most important day for our community, the LGBTQI community, to mobilize on a worldwide scale. And you're part of that today, so give yourselves a round of applause. How did they come up with the date of May 17th? That was the day that the World Health Organization decided in 1990 to declassify homosexuality as a mental disorder. 1990. Yes, I guess, okay. IDHOT is now celebrated in more than 130 countries. Let me tell you some of those countries. Libya. Haiti. Kuwait, Costa Rica, Guyana, Thailand, India, Sri Lanka, Lebanon, China, Japan, Poland, Uganda, and, yeah, Russia. There are events today recognizing this event in all those countries and more. Hundreds of individuals and, uh, and hundreds of individuals and hundreds of organizations join us today celebrating. So you're something, part of something big. It's not one centralized campaign. It's a campaign that everyone can participate in. And you are participating today in Harvey Milk Plaza. What better place? Ground zero for grassroots activism in San Francisco. Now, to amplify our voices in solidarity, some of you are very good at this. You're familiar with Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Grinder. <laughs> I don't know. I couldn't say that. But anyway. Uh, so use those hashtags. You know, today's hashtag is officially hashtag I-D-A-H-O-T. Just remember, International Day Against Homophobia and Transphobia, and also Biphobia. So, as you hear remarks tonight by our speakers, take a chance and, and take a photo of the speaker, of the crowd, of something that's going on, and send it with various uh, hashtags. Include that one. You can also do hashtag resist, hashtag eyes on Chechnya, eyes, uh, hashtag Chelsea Manning, Hashtag LGBT Africa or hashtag Tom Amiano Fan Club. That's all. <laughs> so please join us and make this crowd even bigger than the people are here through social media. And that's our program. We're going to start now with some great speakers. So thank you all for being here. Thank you, Donna. The first of three topics we will be addressing is the LGBTQ crisis in Chechnya, Africa, and the Middle East. Please welcome our next speaker, the person who created and manages the Pink Triangle Project atop Twin Peaks every San Francisco Pride weekend, and who made the beautiful Pink Triangle at Harvey Mill Plaza for our event today. Please welcome Mr. Patrick Carney. Thank you, Jerry and Virginia, for organizing this event and for your leadership in the community. The large pink triangle before us at the bottom of the stairs is there for a reason. It's a reminder. For 22 years, an even larger pink triangle, which is one acre in size, has been installed yearly, also as a reminder that history repeats. Okay. For 22 years, an even larger pink triangle, which is one acre in size than the one in the closet at the bottom of the stairs, has been installed yearly, also as a reminder that history repeats. As has occurred many times over the centuries, we again are in a situation where being homosexual, bi, or trans can not only get you arrested, but locked up, tortured, and killed. For that reason, we need to remember horrific events 
And yes, even remember repulsive symbols like the pink triangle at the bottom of the stairs. Sometimes the best way to keep a symbol pertinent is to own it, to give it a new purpose. This symbol of hate and persecution has been usurped and is now a symbol of survival, defiance, courage, strength, and diversity. The timing of this year's display with the 50th anniversary of San Francisco's Summer of Love is perfect. However, we have to recognize that in Chechnya, internment camps for gays have been established for the first time since World War II. Meanwhile, the president of Chechnya claims gay people do not even exist in his state. Yet the purges began in March. Gays are rounded up. They are detained. They are tortured. Some have been murdered. The government entraps. They interrogate. They try to force captives to turn in others. The goal is the complete cleansing of Chechnya from men of non-traditional sexual orientation. As such, there are only three options for such people in Chechnya. They can leave the country. They can kill themselves. Or they can be killed. Chechnyan authorities have said, kill your gay sons or we will. If there is ever a moment we all need to speak up and become active, this is that moment. The expectation of potential situations such as this have kept the Twin Peaks Pink Triangle going forward year after year for over two decades. The Pink Triangle is one of history's reminders of hate and intolerance, and part of celebrating and appreciating where we are today is understanding where we have been. That is why the Pink Triangle will be up on the mountain again next month, to educate others about the hatred of the past, to help prevent it from happening again, and also to show we aren't out of the woods yet regarding hatred and violence, as Chechnya so vividly illustrates. The test of any democracy is how well it treats its minorities. The Third Reich, the Third Reich demonstrates how easily, easily a government can devise minority scapegoats. Branding homosexuals as criminals let most Germans feel comfortable looking the other way while the Nazis went about their persecution. I suspect the same is now occurring in Chechnya with many people again saying, look the other way. Even though much progress has been made in our own nation in recent years, things could change very rapidly with Donald Trump in power. Also, even though there are currently 23 nations which recognize same-sex marriage, there are nearly 75 nations where same-sex relations are illegal. Eight of those countries impose the death penalty for homosexual activity, including Yemen, Saudi Arabia, and Iran. My own husband had to flee his native Iran in order to survive as an out gay man. Reasons like this are why the Pink Triangle is still going strong, because education is the key to positive change. In addition to the 20-year Pink Triangle on Twin Peaks, San Francisco is fortunate to also have the 14-year-old Pink Triangle Park directly across Market Street from where we're standing. I'm happy to be part of that team working to refresh that memorial and bring it back to its original intent. The main forces have been Andrea Alvio of the Castro Benefits District, John Goldsmith, and the many volunteers who work on the memorial every weekend. Thank you to all of them, and thank you to Gary Virginia for organizing this event. Thank you, Patrick. 22 years he's put that triangle up there with the help of uh, hundreds of volunteers. So if you've never done it, uh, talk to him and get involved. Our next speaker is a native of South Africa and a tireless attorney and activist for the LGBTQI community. I had the pleasure of serving with her on the San Francisco Pride Board for several years and also have been working with her helping LGBT people in Africa that are fleeing persecution. And I have to tell you, Melanie Nathan is the real deal. She has set up multiple emergency funding campaigns and has begged people to donate and that money goes directly with no overhead whatsoever, and it goes to people who are putting African queer people in hiding houses, providing transportation, 
providing food. Their families have ostracized them. And uh, it's the most dire situation you can imagine. And uh, as busy as she is as a mother, a uh, civic person on several boards, she won a Human Rights Award in Marin where she lives. And uh, I would just say give a big warm welcome and thank you to the Executive Director of the African Human Rights Coalition, Melanie Nathan. made me feel really good and thank you for organizing this this is quite an amazing event thank you Donna thank you Patrick thank you my fellow speakers Tom and Sudi I look forward to hearing from you you know I've got this flag around my neck keeping me warm it's kind of an irony because it bears the signatures or oh, not the signatures the names I should say of 20 lesbians from South Africa who were brutally raped under that awful term, corrective rape, and brutally murdered. And their names are written on this flag. And I really wanted to put it around my neck and be here wearing this today. So while much has progressed here in the United States since I, for the first Idaho for LGBT people around the world, I believe things have got worse. Today we are raising awareness, or at least I hope that I am, about the violence and harm to the rights of LGBTI people in Africa. My organization, African Human Rights Coalition, serves LGBTI refugees and asylum seekers, the victims and survivors of the homophobia that has actually caused the mass migration of LGBTI people through Africa, dispersing all around Africa and into the rest of the world. We provide humanitarian services such as safe shelter and also advocacy. On this Ida Heart, it's important to recognize that it is impossible to move towards a world of equality and dignity unless we decriminalize homosexuality and call out all those who misinform promote myth and preach hate. Evangelicals have upped the ante on foreign continents. We must speak out against this. These people must stop their homophobic lies and the maybe the violence will subside. Yes. There are over 30 African countries that criminalize homosexuality through old colonial penal codes and several have further institutionalized this form of homophobia through more onerous and more punitive anti-homosexuality legislation. Now, I applaud the outcry, outcry about the horrors we are seeing against gays in Chechnya. We must keep that up. But I ask you to fight for our brown brothers and sisters on the continent of Africa just as vigorously as you are doing for the Chechnyans. Wake up to the problem everywhere. In Cameroon, hundreds of LGBTI people, did you know this, are detained right now as I speak in deplorable conditions, in prisons, for being gay, and for years at a time without a trial, and without any legal representation. Just last week in Nigeria, 53 gay men went on trial. What was their crime? They attended a same-sex wedding. And I could stand here and tell you much more if only I had the time. Today we are asking you to think globally. I'm gonna tell you something that I don't like to talk about, but I feel compelled. I was shocked when a recent LGBTI celebrity who I asked for help declared, we have too many fish to fry in America before we look abroad. This should not be the way we think. We are a global community and we owe each other allegiance through absolute support and unity. No matter where we are, we are one. In America, LGBTQI youth in particular continue to face the insidious burden of bullying, rejection, discrimination, and violence. When we talk about them, let's remember our LGBT gay youth from all around the world, including Africa, where the consequences, as Gary noted, are dire. Because when criminalized, 
There is no support at all, absolutely nowhere to go, nowhere to turn. That hails that for sure. They call on us here in America to provide safe shelter, calling us mom, calling us dad, because we are all they have. Their own parents often want to kill them out of fear and shame. And they have been expelled from school, banished by tribal chiefs, landlords refuse to house them, and local NGOs have been outlawed. We can, they cannot even cross borders to meet up with UNHCR like other LGBT refugees for, in the hope of being resettled abroad. African HRC is attempting to support over 300 LGBT people right now in Kenya, in Kakuma camp. The conditions there are horrific. Donald Trump, that M fucker. His EOs have served to confuse, cause chaos, and slow down an already slow process. We at African HRC have submitted an amicus brief in the Trump appeal case, and we ask that you all continue to keep an eye on this trajectory and provide support where you can. And finally, before closing my remarks, I would again like to draw your attention to the extreme plight that homophobia has caused African lesbians. To the extreme plight that Africa has caused, that, that homophobia has caused to African lesbians and others around the world, especially those who've been brutalized by that hideous concept of so called corrective rape. This is endemic to South Africa and also a big problem in India. The milieu is ripe for exacerbating this problem where self styled educationalists and preachers misinform, touting that homosexuality is a choice. That is what they're saying. It's not a choice. This must stop. What is the good of commemorating days like Idaho if we fail to call out the continued homophobic words and acts of governments, of evangelicals, of preachers, and even the moderate, moderate religious people? Why are they silent? They are complicit in their silence. And so bringing all of their religion into disrepute. They must be held accountable. That is our job. Speak out, Americans. Speak out against this hateful administration. Resist Trump and Jeff Sessions and their cronies. Hold purveyors of hate accountable with every fiber of your being. 